Welcome to the State of the Veteran Union. Jermaine Higgins with Hire GI. And Maurice Wilson with National Veterans Transition Services, also called Reboot. Oh. So we got a pretty interesting show lined up today, huh? Yeah, I'm really excited about today. Yeah. Well, you know, we're going to get into the show in a few minutes, but uh, we want to just kind of reflect back just a little bit on some of the past shows that we've had. We've been getting some really good feedback from people. So thank I you. I don't, I don't know if you remember. Yeah, thank you. I don't know if you guys remember the last show where we talked about the veteran entrepreneurs. A lot of incredible feedback from that. Again, there's a whole universe out there and a big need for veteran entrepreneurs to be connected. You know, we found out that roughly of the 200,000 people that get out every year, 25% of them choose to become veteran entrepreneurs. That's awesome. Which is a major driver. But then when you take a look at their spouses and your families, 48% of the spouses are running their own businesses. Yeah. And so some really huge stuff there. Yeah, we had what, the Rosie Network. We mm -hmm. had the Veteran Chambers of Commerce. Yeah. And then the summit. How did the summit go? The summit went really good. Um, that happened. Uh, Sorry, that we're. Uh, oh, we were flowing. <laughs> 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 Uh, okay. Okay. Start all over again. Okay. <laughs> well, see, I'm going to be completely different. Now. Good yeah. practice. Yeah. Practice makes perfect. <laughs> all right. More spontaneous, right? <laughs> all right. Live in three, two, one. Welcome to the State of the Veteran Union. Jermaine Higgins with Higher GI. And Maurice Wilson with National Veterans Transition Services, also called Reboot. We want to welcome you to today's show and, uh, Wow, just kind of reflect back on the last few shows. Uh, very interesting response from everyone. Uh, Jermaine, I don't know if you remember, well, I know you remember, last time we talked about veteran entrepreneurs, that was huge. Very huge. I think uh, everyone gave great response about the show. Mm -hmm. We had the Rosie Network, which yep. gave some great insight of things that I had no idea. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, we also had the Veteran Chambers of Commerce, so hopefully people were able to take advantage of that. Mm -hmm. And then the Summit. Some of it went really well. So that was uh, this past Saturday. Uh -huh. uh, we had a great turnout. We were expecting about maybe 200 on veteran entrepreneurs. We had about 150 actually show wow. up. Wow. So a lot of them made connections, built bridges. They connected with organizations like Veterans Launch, uh, Barker Labs. We had uh, venture capital folks there. We had uh, organizations, they call them CDFIs, you know, uh, funding institutions that were helping veterans get funding. It was a lot of energy in that room. And again, it was presented by the City of San Diego, so we want to thank the City thank of San Diego you. for hosting that first annual Veteran Entrepreneur Summit. But it went very, very well. We actually have a date for next year, yeah. which is September 15, 2018. So it attend. went over really, really well. And a big part of it, a big piece of it, was supported by the Veterans Chamber of Commerce. And so, again, I just want to put that on everybody's mind, Veterans Chamber of Commerce. Mm -hmm. And so it's one of those long overdue needed entities to help us bring it all together under one umbrella. It's yeah, pretty phenomenal. Absolutely. And then I think the week before was about the need for reverse boot the camp. need for the reverse boot camp, Which yeah. was an excellent show to kind of talk about why you do, mm -hmm. why you need to be rebooted. Yeah, right? yeah. So, so let me tell you about some of the developments that have happened since then, because this, this is a moving target. There are a lot of pieces to this whole puzzle. So when you start thinking about what we call the continuum, which is, you know, coming in the military and then getting out of the military. Mm -hmm. Well, it's a prescribed route coming in. It's a prescribed journey coming in. You go down to the uh, military and processing sta station. Uh, they administer the armed services vocational aptitude test. It identifies where you fit best in the military as far as occupation. Mm -hmm. And then they schedule you for boot camp to enculturate you. Then they also schedule you for your occupational or your career training. You go off and get your training. And then, boom, you're right into your duty station. That's how that system works. Right. The challenge is that we don't have anything similar to that coming out. And that's what we've been putting together. Uh, what we now call it is this kind of an interesting term. Yes, there's a reverse boot camp piece. That's like one element. But now we're calling it the veteran talent pipeline. And so again, it's really how do we get people from the armed forces back into the workforce? Mm -hmm. Now I found out some really interesting statistics that I didn't know, which is, Let's, let's pick on California, for example. You know we have 1.9 million veterans here in the state of California? I believe it. Guess what percentage of them have disengaged from the workforce that are not working, have chosen not to get back in the workforce? What percent? 56 percent. 56 percent. So 56 percent of 1.9 million veterans are not working. Wow. And so we're finding that there are some very uh, unique and interesting reasons why they're not. 
And mostly is because the journey coming in is not as orchestrated as the journey coming out. Right. So if there was a veteran, I'm using kind of like that, veteran talent pipeline process that says we reverse engineer, you go through a, a series of redefinition or reclassification mm -hmm. that fits you into the various industries out there, it'll be successful. A lot likely to higher success. Yep. So, so what's happened since then, you know, since we were talking about it, is uh, we started working with the Navy real closely. We were working with them anyway. But one of the missing links to this whole process was getting to the veterans early before they decide to transition. Mm -hmm. And I, I was just at a conference this past, uh, past Friday, uh, Thursday and Friday, I was in Los Angeles at the, what they call State of the American Veteran Conference. And that's put on each year by the University of Southern California, so USC. Mm -hmm. And we had roughly about 700 people in the room. And the big discussion, the big topic was really about how do we get veterans back into the workforce? Mm -hmm. And so one of the ideas that came up was what we had talked about with the reverse boot camp, but also starting early on in their transition. And so what we've been able to do, and we just started it this Monday, which is really cool, is actually working with the Navy during what they call the pre-separation stage. Mm -hmm. Two years prior to the individuals getting out, mm -hmm. the Navy is letting us come in to talk to them about selecting a new career so we can put them on their journey to success. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. So it makes sense. More to come. We just started. Mm -hmm. We'll get some more data. But that's just some of the, I guess you could call it after action stuff, you know, Excellent. since our last, you know, discussions and our last shows. But we got a really exciting show lined up oh, today. You want to so tell exciting. folks about it? Yeah. So today we are going to talk about the GI Film Festival San Diego. And uh, hopefully you guys have heard about it. If not, at least today you will. And we have two great guests that are going to talk about the festival uh, and we're going to introduce them in a second. Mm -hmm. And they're going to kind of talk about their background. They're going to talk about the festival. They're going to talk about actually a, a movie that's coming out that mm -hmm. you all need to watch. Mm -hmm. And you're going to learn some things that hopefully will help you uh, partake in a great festival. Okay, so I guess let's introduce Stacy. How you doing, Stacy? Welcome. I'm doing good. Stacey Thank you for having Viscara? me. Stacy Is that how you pronounce your last name? Uh, Ridinger, actually. Oh, oh, excuse, His okay. last name's Viscara. We're not married. <laughs> I read from the wrong. I read from the wrong. I actually married him. Right here on Where's the cue cards at? My bad. <laughs> <laughs> See what happens when you let me loose, <laughs> unchained. <laughs> Stacy Ridinger. Thank yes, you. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> We're, we're sure. glad to have you on the show. And then we have Mark, mm -hmm. Viscara. Did I get that right? Got it right. So I got <laughs> it right there. And we're going to hear a lot, of, a lot more about them. But, you know, Stacy, um, kind of tell us about you. You know, how did you get into the, the film industry? You know, how did this all come about? Um, well, um, I've been serving here uh, at Camp Pendleton with First Marine Expeditionary Force uh, mm -hmm. since 2014. Mm -hmm. And in 2015, um, it was around the fall time frame, I remember um, a Marine veteran stepping into our office. I work in public affairs mm -hmm. and he had some free tickets and he said, hey, mm -hmm. there's this festival going on here in San Diego. We'd love to give these out. And mm -hmm. so he plopped those down on my desk. He was in a hurry. I mm -hmm. think he had plenty of places to stop by. And um, that was kind of my first introduction to the GI Film Festival. From there, uh, in 2016, I was busy with things with the Marine Corps deployments and of such. Mm -hmm. But then coming back to this year as I finish and close out my chapter, I'm retired now mm -hmm. from the Marines, I mm -hmm. really felt that this is another way for us to be able to um, tell those stories of our military men and women. Mm -hmm. um, but also, I think that um, there's civilians out he out there who also live through that history, mm -hmm. whether or not they were in the service or not. So I felt strongly mm -hmm. about advocating for, for people to come out and, and uh, support. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I saw one clip that talked about the Korean War, mm -hmm. and it showed some of the activity in uh, 1952. Mm -hmm. And it made me think about a film that was done uh, here in San Diego uh, several years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, the title of it is Hold at All Cost. And what it spoke about, it spoke about the Korean War, mm. um, a place called uh, Outpost Charlie. Mm. You know, that was a, a critical um, um, a strategic location uh, just outside of Seoul, Korea. Mm. But, you know, it's like a, a overpass to the mountains to North Korea. That was a pivotal moment mm. in a pivotal turning point in the whole Korean War mm -hmm. where uh, the whole concept of hold at all costs mm -hmm. meant that we had like this small number of uh, uh, army personnel that had to hold this this checkpoint mm -hmm. to not let the North Koreans down into the South Peninsula 
if they had, it would have been, we'd be having a t completely different historical perspective there. Definitely, and I think that um, what I'd like everyone to know that's watching this is that the films that will be shown over the next few days between 18 and 22 October mm -hmm. are going to range from things from World War II all the way to present day. Wow. And so um, there's something for each of our generations. Mm -hmm. um, I, I really um, encourage those to come out, especially mm -hmm. those that might have um, lived through the Vietnam War through their family or military mm -hmm. friends, mm -hmm. but didn't serve themselves. Yeah. Um, one interesting piece I'm seeing that's a theme through the films mm -hmm. is that we're seeing the other side. Yes. So we're not just learning about mm -hmm. um, from a military U.S. American perspective, but mm -hmm. we're learning about mm -hmm. from the other side. Mm -hmm. For instance, we have a film that's going to be showing mm -hmm. on the, let me pull this up, on the 18th of October, mm -hmm. and it's called The Two Sides Project. Wow. And just to briefly give you a summary about mm -hmm. that, imagine watching a film that brings together Viet Vietnamese and American uh, men and women who both lost their parents during yeah. the Vietnam conflict. Mm -hmm. And they're all meeting together in Vietnam, and mm -hmm. you're hearing their stories, and you're mm -hmm. kind of feeling um, the visceral aspects of what it's like to go to a place where you lost a parent. Mm -hmm. or, wow. and, and, and they're bringing up I mm -hmm. think issues that we often don't see in the history books about mm -hmm. how did the Vietnamese feel about the Americans being there in the country. So. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, you know, there's, there's the other side, which is um, recently we uh, were working with uh, Vietnam veterans that were homeless in Detroit. And uh, these guys are living uh, in a place called Peacock Square. And they were not only living in this homeless domicile, but they were still living in the past. Mm -hmm. And they really hadn't gotten a chance to move forward because as we all know, you know, from history, that the Vietnam, you know, veteran, when they came home, they weren't very well received. Exactly. And so they're, they're still living with that, that cloud over them. Mm -hmm. and, and when we were working with them, we were, you know, seeking to get them to let that go and move on with their life. And fortunately, we were successful in doing it. But there are still so many mm -hmm. Vietnam veterans out there who are still stuck in the past trying to reconcile that themselves. And so it sounds like what you guys are trying to do, and again, this is you know our understanding, mm -hmm. is to re-educate the public mm -hmm. on what really went on to change hearts and minds. Is that you know, kind of like what's I would going say on there? Definitely, and I would also say that it's an opportunity for those who have maybe um, served and walked away from the military and that lifestyle and haven't, mm -hmm. um, they kind of went off and closed that chapter. This might be, some way of closure for them, for mm -hmm. them to be able to come in and, and also a, a rebirth. Yeah. For them to meet men and women who mm -hmm. either served or care about those who served mm -hmm. and to get that thanks. Uh, and mm -hmm. that kind of ties into another show that's going to be premiering. Mm -hmm. um, and that one's actually going to be premiering on uh, the 19th mm -hmm. at the Carlsbad, Regal Carlsbad, which is the first time this year that we're going to be using that theater. Um, this film is called Thank You For Your, Thank you for your Service. And mm -hmm. this one is based more on the modern day military um, mm -hmm. soldier who went forward, served, mm -hmm. came back with a lot of emotional and physical emotions that he had to live through and kind of reintegrate back into. Mm -hmm. And I think that this might be something that connects to those military men or women mm -hmm. that are out there. Mm -hmm. um, but, uh, but again, I really want to touch on the fact it's not just about the military members. Mm -hmm. this, this is really for us to be able to get the rest of the community to mm -hmm. see um, I think San Diego is the third largest veteran population mm -hmm. here yes. in, in the United States. So um, it, it's a large city. Mm -hmm. People can go around day to day mm -hmm. and not really understand that they have this many military men members and veterans. So. It's because the military is really blended in so mm -hmm. well. You know, it's <laughs> like the background, you know. People just kind of drive by the midway, you know, every mm -hmm. day. They may see it or may not see it. Or as they're driving down Harbor Drive, they may not see those big aircraft carriers sitting over there <laughs> because it's just blended into the background. I mean, that, that happens all too often. Mm -hmm. um, let's bring Mark into the discussion there, um, you know, former Navy. Um, so, so, Mark, how did you get started with this? Well, yeah, I've, uh, I'm always under the belief that if you uh, take, make a career out of your passion, Mm -hmm. You won't work a day in your life. Absolutely. So, um, so as I was growing up, I just, you know, my dad was a was a service member. He he fought in World War II. Mm -hmm. uh, World War II. He's going to hate me for saying that. <laughs> mm -hmm. No, in in uh, his brother fought in World War II. He fought in um, the Vietnam mm -hmm. War, and uh, so he's gone a lot. And um, so what I do without my dad, mm -hmm. I go to movies. Mm -hmm. And you know, mm -hmm. I'm here spending thirty five cents for a ticket on base. Mm -hmm. I go watch movies. And I just saw all these great movies. So I knew, it was like, wow, this is really something I want to do. Mm -hmm. But also still had the, the warrior gene 
So I said, well, okay, I'm going to go ahead and uh, join the service. So I went ahead and did a whole career mm -hmm. flying, just like my dad flew. Mm -hmm. And uh, but oh, I chose wow. the Navy instead mm -hmm. of the Air Force. Mm -hmm. and, but the one good I choice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was a little, you know, it was a little bit of con competition. He was like, well, mm -hmm. Dad, you, you know, you can land on a runway. Everyone can land on a runway. <laughs> yeah. land on a ship. Moving Let's get ship. something that's moving yeah. there. Moving you know? ship. So, uh, so we give him a lot of crap for that because his other his other um, mm -hmm. son did the same thing. Mm -hmm. So, but there's a little story behind that one too because because he was shot down over in North Vietnam. Mm -hmm. Oh wow! And mm -hmm. guess who picked him up? Mm -hmm. Not the Air Force. Mm -hmm. the Navy. The Navy. Navy yeah. yeah. They both mm -hmm. the, the helicopter pilot got a uh, just to shoot flying cross just to go deep in there mm -hmm. to, to pull him out. So mm -hmm. hey, my brother and I we had to pay him back. Mm -hmm. It's called payback. Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. and, and I'm glad we did because it was a it was, mm -hmm. we both had incredible careers in the Navy. But mm -hmm. then now I was like, well, okay, now I go back to my other passion because mm -hmm. well, I, I didn't work all those years in the Navy because mm -hmm. I had a blast doing it. Well, now I want to go back to my other passion, which is uh, filmmaking. Because mm -hmm. I was mm -hmm. literally in middle school, I was writing scripts. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I borrowed my dad's eight millimeter camera. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know he didn't, he didn't know about it. But, uh, age, he's dating himself. Yeah, yeah. yeah. eight millimeter. And, <laughs> and you know, I was making my own movie, so mm -hmm. that's what I did. So as soon as I retired, um, I went ahead and formed a production company called Ooh. Speed and Angels Productions. Nice. And um, mm -hmm. started right on it. And just like we talked about, it's all about storytelling. Mm -hmm. And my first film, which was last year at the GI Film mm -hmm. Festival, was uh, The Flying Greek. Mm -hmm. It covered the, the World War II story. Mm -hmm. um, so now I want to move on to Korea. Mm -hmm. and this is mm -hmm. this year's uh, is The Forgotten Hero, telling yeah. the, the Royce Williams story. Mm -hmm. And that's mm -hmm. an incredible story. And then I'm, I'm already working on next year's, which mm -hmm. is going to be, mm -hmm. again, following mm -hmm. the World War II, Korea mm -hmm. is, is going to be uh, my dad's story mm -hmm. about Vietnam. Yeah. So oh, I'm already working on the documentary mm -hmm. on that one. Mm -hmm. so. You know, speaking of documentaries, one of the things, I'm just kind of planting a seed. Mm -hmm. One of the things that I think we need here in San Diego is kind of like a documentary, you know, of its military history. You know, which is, you know, very rich. You know, we have the, the largest military concentration in the country. Mm -hmm. Roughly 20,000 people are getting out. So big, big history. So that's just an opportunity for you to kind of think about. <laughs> so so and let's kind of get into the film festival. So what are the dates for the film festival? So the film festival will go from 18 to 22 October. Mm -hmm. Most of the films are actually going to be shown on Saturday and Sunday, which mm -hmm. makes it convenient, convenient. for the audience. Yeah. Um, on the 18th, like I brought up earlier, um, mm -hmm. that film, The Two Sides Project, mm -hmm. will be having its West Coast premiere. And that one's going to be at the... Um, Excuse me, just for a second. Um, actually, if everyone can go to the uh, GI Film Festival Sandy SD.org <laughs> website, that detail is on there. I apologize for not having it up mm -hmm. front here for you. Mm -hmm. um, but um, we're going to have a couple of films that are there on the 18th and that evening. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we'll move on to the 19th. Um, for the first time, San Diego Film Fest will conduct screenings, like I mentioned, at the North County location. Mm -hmm. Some of the themes are going to include World War II being remembered. Um, there'll be a block that'll be shown starting at five, and then they'll move on all the way through until that last showing, which I had mentioned, which was the thank you for your service, which will start at 7.30 p.m. Mm -hmm. um, if people are interested in buying the tickets, I just wanted to state that if you can go to the um, GIFilmFestOSD.org website, mm -hmm. and there you can watch all the, the film um, previews, and then you can click on whichever film you'd like, and it's very easy to go through the process. We all are also offering discounts for military members and veterans mm -hmm. to come out to it. It, it looks like mm -hmm. you guys are doing it in various venues, like you have the Museum of Photographic Arts, mm -hmm. you know, in Belleville Park, uh, the Regal uh, in Carlsbad, uh, on board the USS Midway mm -hmm. Museum, that's going to be another nice uh, nice venue, and uh, uh, AMC in Mission Valley. Mm -hmm. So uh, are there other cities that are holding these kind of film festivals or, you yes, know, actually, for example? Sure. San Diego, this is the third year here, but mm -hmm. the GI Film Festival actually originated out in Washington, D.C. Oh, in wow. 2007. Oh, okay. So some of the films that are going to be shown um, over the course of the 18 to 22 October mm -hmm. will be some that were shown in May of this, past, of this year mm -hmm. uh, on the um, East Coast. Um, I think what happened was when it started up in 2007, they just realized how large of a population we had here mm. on the east, on the makes, west coast, yeah, sense, and they really yeah. wanted to bring something home. Mm -hmm. Something else I'd like to mention is that what's unique to the San Diego Film Festival is we have local artists, whether they be actors, whether they be those that I are filmmakers, ask you that. and yeah. so there's a showcase of them specifically, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. um, we actually did some judging. Mm -hmm. I'm on the council, and I've been, had or the committee, and I've had a chance to look at those. 
um, it's just awesome for us to be able to harness that energy here mm -hmm. for our own local population. About how many local artists do you have participating? I think there's between maybe 12 to 15, oh, wow. but um, I, I have to look up the numbers for you exactly, but um, just, just gauging it, in only three years, they're mm -hmm. starting to no notice more and more growth. Mm -hmm. um, I'd like to state that the active duty military out there working in public affairs, I have a very large group of military men and women who mm -hmm. do photo and video journalism mm -hmm. for a living. Mm -hmm. And some of them do shorter mm -hmm. um, segments. And mm -hmm. so we're trying to encourage them to, if they have that niche for it, mm -hmm. to think about what type of smaller um, short films. Mm -hmm. um, this, this, this film festival is gonna be films from like three or four minutes all the way to a full feature length movie. So wow. kind of encouraging people to not uh, think they have to eat the whole watermelon. Mm -hmm. You know, if you just mm -hmm. want a slice of it, you mm -hmm. can try it out, and it's just a great, great chance to, to get um, something out there to the public. So, so Mark, you were mentioning earlier that um, your films being um, played in like what three cities simultaneously? Yeah, you know, tell us a little bit about that. <laughs> What's going on? Well, there? When you, you know, when you, when you make films, you you definitely want to get them out, mm -hmm. and so you submit it to different film festivals. And uh -huh. unfortunately, this is the time which is terrible this year, as I have um, my films being premiered in all in the same night in three different states, wow. and mm -hmm. they all want you there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So who won? That's uh, going to get you. Oh, Houston. Houston. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, but they need some help. So yeah. Yes. Well, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And and that's a, uh, it's a more of a celebration of mm -hmm. Royce Williams, which is the you know is the forgotten hero of the Forgotten mm -hmm. War, mm -hmm. and um, he's going to be uh, honored at the one of the largest air shows in uh, the United States at the uh, Wings Over Houston, mm -hmm. and um, mm -hmm. he's going to be signing autographs, and then mm -hmm. they're going to premiere the the. the film so everyone can see it and uh, mm -hmm. so yeah That's so we're nice. gonna be going there unfortunately I gotta I got mm -hmm. pack up and yeah and miss the <laughs> GI film mm -hmm. us, which I'm, I really wanted to see it here too because so Mar Mark's, Mark's kind of like the Steven Spielberg of uh, the film you know the film industry for veterans if you will <laughs> <laughs> uh, not really yeah, not, <laughs> yet, not yet so so you got like what four films you got uh, Forgotten Hero Once Guilty Now Innocent and then you have another one called Still Dead well, no, that's that's actually believe it or not, that's the um, that's all the one film. It's, oh, it's wow. once it's a long title, but it came from a. Okay. Uh, I got the idea because I read a newspaper article mm -hmm. and I said, mm -hmm. "That's a great movie title." Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It was once guilty, mm -hmm. now innocent, mm -hmm. still dead, mm -hmm. because it's all a story about a true story about Tom Horn, mm -hmm. who was um, convicted and executed, but was innocent because they retried mm -hmm. him mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. he was. Uh, Tried and convicted and executed in 1903, but then was retried in 1993. Mm -hmm. And then it was covered by the New York Times as, as an article. It was like, well, once guilty, no, it's like, but still dead. Mm -hmm. So I said, that'd make a great movie. Mm -hmm. So I made the movie and, um, mm -hmm. and it, it got accepted as well. To the and I would like to plug for him because mm -hmm. I have had a chance to, to, see, to see it. Mm -hmm. And of the different films that I've previewed, um, I would say that what I like about his film is that it doesn't give the story away. Mm -hmm. it, well, it, it has, those, it has those layers and it, mm -hmm. it provides that space for you as the viewer mm -hmm. to kind of think through and, and um, I think that there's some good messages that are sent through it. So mm -hmm. I'm hoping more people will come out and, and watch it. Okay. So we have two films in, in this GI Film Festival, uh, mm -hmm. but I'm still like working on uh, finishing up the documentary that will be submitted for next year. And I actually have uh, one on the slate to do, again, I'm a big uh, historian freak, mm -hmm. and I want to do a film about Jesse Brown, the first oh, wow. uh, African-American uh, mm. Navy fighter pilot. Mm. And mm -hmm. I just think his story is so compelling, so I, I want to do that wow. story as well. Nice. So. Awesome. Nice. Well, you know, again, uh, as I was mentioning to you earlier, I think as, as you look at the veteran population, you know, we have with uh, roughly 22 million of us out here. And one of the things that we, we don't have on television on a regular basis is a, uh, a medium like this that, you know, really helps us not only connect with our history, but also something that deals with our future, you know, that, you know, passes information along in terms of where we are. Think about the, the Vietnam veteran mm -hmm. or let's say uh, Desert Shield, Desert Storm, individuals who got out several years ago before we had all these major turnovers and improvements in a lot of the veterans programs, they're kind of stuck in a time war. Mm -hmm. You know, where, as I was mentioning to you, mm -hmm. if we had a veterans channel, just like the AFES used to come on mm -hmm. every Saturday morning, mm -hmm. yeah. you could actually tune in on a Saturday morning, 
and get updated on what's going on and catch up with some of the new policies, yep. some of the new mm -hmm. programs, uh, make connections to some things and really kind of, you know, get your sense of community back. Yep. You know, do you see any any anything from what you guys are doing mm -hmm. evolving up to something like that ultimately at some point? Actually, mm -hmm. I, I see it coming because I, I see it in the GI Film Festival because mm -hmm. um, the, the festival keeps on growing mm -hmm. and the more veterans come and then mm -hmm. once you get, it's all networking. Mm -hmm. the, indus the film industry is about networking mm -hmm. and you, you get the talent. And every time I go to the film festival, I mean, I was, last night we were mm -hmm. celebrating, I'm like, I, I want to work with you. Yeah. you know, and in fact, one of them was, it was, mm -hmm. you know, I was talking, this, this great actor, and I said, I want to do the Jesse Brown story. You'd be perfect for mm -hmm. it, you know? And mm -hmm. so it's, it's going to be really fun to, to do it. So exactly, it's about spreading the word. It's mm -hmm. about networking. Mm -hmm. um, and in A Forgotten Hero, I, I made a point. I really did want to make it, because uh, it was targeted to go to the GI Film Festival, so I wanted a mm -hmm. veteran crew. Yeah. So uh, my cinematographer yeah. was a... Uh, Retired, Retired, Retired mm -hmm. again, mm -hmm. um, medic. Hospital corpsman. Yeah. Cor hospital corpsman. Mm -hmm. Incredible cameraman, incredible um, mm -hmm. cinematographer. Mm -hmm. So, um, John Hams Hamslow, he's mm -hmm. a great guy. I love working with him. Mm -hmm. work, he worked with me also on uh, Still Dead, too. Mm -hmm. uh, then we had uh, two actors. One was active duty Navy, <laughs> and he, he wanted to get go into the mm -hmm. acting, so I said, okay, I'll, I'll bring you in mm -hmm. on this film. I'm doing Forgotten Hero. So he mm -hmm. played uh, a wingman. Mm -hmm. And then, um, and of course, we had a, a veteran actor, and you mm -hmm. seen him. He, he was in Tombstone. Mm -hmm. I also had worked mm -hmm. with him in my western. Mm -hmm. But then I said, "No, you would make a great admiral." Mm -hmm. and he goes, "Well, I did <laughs> play." He goes, "I was in Flight of the movie Flight of the Intruder. Mm -hmm. You remember that one?" Yeah. He goes, "Yeah, I played the uh, master, the, the carrier master chief mm -hmm. on Flight of the Intruder. He's Air Force." Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. yeah, I had all these veterans in in on uh, my my film crew uh, and actor crew and. And that's why the, these uh, it's a great product at the end. You, yeah. you guys work with uh, uh, what's that veterans in film and television? Yep. I guess that's a whole nother mm -hmm. another yep. group out there. Yep, that's a lot a lot of based talent out of, there. yeah based out of L.A. Out of I, LA? Uh, I know a lot of people up there. In fact, mm -hmm. uh, I work with uh, one of the lead members up there to get a cast call again because I wanted veterans. Mm -hmm. You know, it's mm -hmm. it's all about I, mean, I I want the best, mm -hmm. but you know. The, some of the best are the veterans. They just don't. You just don't know it. Well, you know, mm -hmm. there's having a an, an actor and then a a real life person acting in that role. Mm -hmm. right. You know, that's a veteran. I imagine there's got to be a, a different. Uh, I guess you could say level of familiarity that hey, well, mm -hmm. I, I, you don't have to tell me about it. I know it. Right. So I can just kind of act this out. Right. You know, put it on on the stage there. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Exactly. Very interesting. Oh yeah. The the, um, uh, the guy the actor I was just telling you about, um, Pierce Hareko, he played the admiral. Mm -hmm. Perfect. I mean, he, he looked like, mm -hmm. I mean, I, I work with an admiral, mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. it's like, man, yeah. you really had him, you know, you really had this guy down. Yeah. So let me ask you, uh, this is just a curiosity question. Mm -hmm. um, so we have the film festival. Um, hopefully a lot of a lot of you show up. So hopefully we have a lot of us show up. I'm, I'm going to mm -hmm. come out there, watch mm -hmm. as many films as I can. Um, but what's next? Is there a possibility that like Netflix, uh, it seems like Netflix is like really getting really big and mm -hmm. you know grabbing all these specialty films or something like that. Has anyone from Netflix approached you guys yet that says, you know, let us put it on, on Netflix and play it all over the place? We wish. <laughs> oh, okay, well, I, mean, that, I just put that, that in the universe for you, you know? I would love to do that because that's what we're, we're looking to do. One, I want to make it, I want to make a full feature film biopic about the Royce Williams story. I mean, mm -hmm. his story is so compelling, and you just take a look at what, you know, you talk about a man who grew up during mm -hmm. the Great Depression, mm -hmm. so he suffered through that, and then went on to fight three wars. Yeah, oh my goodness. I mean, his story mm -hmm. is, and then, mm -hmm. like I so said, you'll be seeing the trailer coming up here, and that's it. I mean, that's his, that's one of the events in his life. Mm -hmm. So I want to tell his whole story. You're just seeing a little small, small part of it in the, the short at the GI Film Festival. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. then, you know, then I got my Western where, well, that's a perfect episodic mm -hmm. that could be sold to Netflix because, mm -hmm. and Tom Horn is, his his life is very compelling where, mm -hmm. you know, he was, yeah. he, was he, mm -hmm. he, 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 he tracked down the capture of Jar Geronimo. Mm -hmm. He was on San Juan Hill mm. with the Rough Riders. Mm -hmm. He was, you know, you just start naming oh. all the things that he achieved. Well, that's episodics that mm -hmm. you can put on Hulu, Amazon, Netflix. Mm -hmm. So it's a matter of just mm -hmm. getting the meetings. Mm -hmm. And that's just the, 
Mm -hmm. The nature of the beast of working mm -hmm. in Hollywood. Yeah. <laughs> Let's get mm -hmm. those meetings. Well, hopefully someone's out there watching <laughs> and they mm -hmm. have a connection <laughs> to hope. You know, Amazon or to Netflix and we can get out there so everybody can see this. Jermaine? Yeah, so I guess tell us, Stacey, why should they attend? Why is it relevant to San Diego? Yeah. What would be your last remarks to get them all excited? Mm -hmm. Well, so what, I, what I'd like to close with is just say that I think this is a great way to immerse yourself into the culture and lifestyle of the military. Mm -hmm. This isn't just about um, military members and their families coming out to watch mm -hmm. themselves on film. Mm -hmm. It's also another way to promote the art of storytelling. I think that um, oftentimes... Um, we're in that digital age of being on our phones and watching these quick YouTube videos and things like that. But um, immerse yourself in a community, San Diego community. Come out and meet other people in San Diego. Instead of just being at your home, watching it on Netflix, come out to the theaters. And mm -hmm. um, one thing that wasn't mentioned earlier is we're also going to have some of the filmmakers that mm -hmm. will be available to mm -hmm. speak about their films and we'll have panel discussions. So oh, nice. um, for those that are interested in the film industry, getting mm -hmm. into it, mm -hmm. um, those that... Um, didn't get a chance to say thank you to mm -hmm. those that have served. You'll, mm -hmm. you'll get a chance to do that at this, mm -hmm. at this event. Um, we're really hoping that, um, I think you had asked about what's going to happen next. Mm -hmm. From talking to others who work with the GI Film Festival, the hope would be that this could be a branch that could help. I think you had brought up earlier about mentor programs mm -hmm. and how do we trans transition people out. Mm -hmm. um, there's plenty of men and women out there that are interested in being entrepreneurs, whether it be in the film industry otherwise mm -hmm. and this might be a chance for us to continue to extend that so mm -hmm. and yeah. you know right now uh, everybody has like their little PDAs mm -hmm. so we're all kind of like mini directors <laughs> of sort <laughs> exactly. you know we're taking mm -hmm. pictures of this and videos of that and so mm -hmm. it just seems like the next thing to do mm -hmm. you know which is to have this gathering of all the videos a collage of activities that become some historical place that we can get all the information mm -hmm. of everything we need. Mm -hmm. And so I think this is fantastic and really, really, really salute you. Like I said, I'm going to be out there. Okay. I, I plan to come and participate as, as much as I can mm -hmm. to learn a little bit more. I, I did have like the, the, the little uh, video director bug in me one time. <laughs> And I, I went out and I bought like Final Cut Pro yeah. and Ooh. started using it. Yeah, I, I, I realized I was way out of my league on that one. <laughs> I, I had to dial that one back to uh, the, I, the uh, uh, iMac video, iMovies, which is a little bit more in my level or something like that. But I think all of us kind of have a, a filmmaker within us. You know, we're all partially storytellers, if you will. We live in this society of YouTube and Vimeo and mm -hmm. all the other applications that are out there. I think it's just great for everybody to come and connect, learn, meet film directors, mm -hmm. you know, people who are actors who are actually doing the work, learn a little bit more about it, you know, and, and grow it. And so, again, we just totally salute you for what you're doing and for your service as well, you know, both of you. And so, congratulations on what we think is going to be an outstanding event. And this is, what, the third year? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow. It's growing every year. Too. Growing every year? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Well, thank you, Stacy and Mark, for being our guests. And, and we do we do have a trailer that we'd like yeah. to show the audience for them to take a look at. For the trailer, is there anything that people need to know about October going on with Reboot? Is there any? Well, so, yeah. You know, I, I love shameless plugs. <laughs> you, know, you, know, you give me a chance to say something. Absolutely, I'm going to say it. So, in the month of October, we have uh, two unique things happening. One, we're starting uh, an all-female Reboot workshop. Mm -hmm. And what we found is that the male experience is different from the female's experience. Mm -hmm. She's having much more challenges. In fact, what women have to do is they have to give up more of their identity to become a service member. And in many cases, they have to give up their femininity. So each year, twice a year, we host a, a women's only workshop. So guys, don't even, don't even sign up. <laughs> it's, all, it's all about our women to help them find empowerment and independence, uh, connect with one another, and then build. And so that's going to take place uh, in October, uh, run through a little bit of November. And then we're also doing a homeless veteran mm. workshop also. And awesome. again, if you've been a homeless veteran and you've been out there uh, and had your life just kind of like almost end, where you now have to rebuild and start back over again, uh, what we're going to help you do is uh, we're partnering with a lot of people who initially will help you get stabilized in your housing, but our goal is to help you get back into the workforce. Mm. And so okay. we call it... Uh, from off the street and back on your feet. Okay? Oh, nice. And the goal is to get them engaged in the workforce. It, mm -hmm. It's no longer uh, good enough to just put a veteran in a housing complex. Mm -hmm. We want to see them productive, 
producing with dignity back in the workforce. And so that's the initiatives. Thanks for bringing it up. Awesome. Well, appreciate it. What about, what about Haji? What are you guys doing? Uh, October, we are at Travis Air Force Base. So we have over 40 employers. Mm -hmm. So if you are in the Travis Air Force Base area, make sure you pre-register so we can schedule on-site interviews. Mm -hmm. We have Shell Oil Company, Lockheed, wow. SpaceX. Mm -hmm. So some great companies coming to look to hire vets. And then in November, we'll be back in San Diego on 32nd Street Naval Base. So nice. please pre-register for that. And yeah. Let's keep having fun hiring our vets. A lot going on. So we yeah. got uh, GI Film Festival. Mm -hmm. Okay, and those dates again are October? 18th, 18th to the 22nd. All across the county. Make sure you sign up for that. We got reboot workshops taking place for women veterans and homeless. And we got career fairs with Hire GI. With Hire GI. A lot right. going on. So mm -hmm. let's go ahead and roll that, uh, that trailer. And thanks for visiting State of the Veteran Union. See you next time. Another world war. I don't think anyone would survive. Johnny O, right one o'clock. Sir, we may have a problem. They've reversed course. They're bracketing our last two Panthers. Sir, they're outmatched. You mix high.